students in UCD are encouraged to go and scrub up to assist at operations, to come and see how actual operations are done, and indeed in the maternity hospitals to assist with deliveries of babies. Doctors have this remarkable trust from their patients. And so it's very important that young doctors understand the responsibility that goes with that. We want to not just train medical students, we want them graduates who diagnose and treat disease but can also understand the scientific process so they can further develop new treatments and new diagnostic tests. So medicine is indeed a, a, a broad church. We always think of the family doctor, our students think of things they see in TV shows, but in fact Medicine offers a huge amount of opportunities for students. The ability to give something back, to return something to society, is both broad and diverse and it makes it a very attractive option in the long run for people. When they first come to the hospital, they will spend a lot of time on the wards and they will spend time with patients. Students then examine patients on wards under supervision of um, more senior doctors and under supervision of consultants. And they take part in all of the uh, team-based activities that take place on the wards. That There's at least 400 clinical educators across the country um, educating our students at any particular point in time. As they move on through their clinical education, when they're skilled up to a certain point, they're then ready to deal with real patients in real life situations. And that's very important. It's very difficult to learn medicine from a textbook. You need a patient and you need a teacher. We have only really reduced the mortality rate of cancer by about 5%. So we believe within the School of Medicine and Medical Science that we need to train scientists at the interface of science and medicine so that these people can more efficiently bring ideas from the bench into the clinic. But we're now moving into the molecular age. We now need to understand what are the genetics behind it, what is the molecular mechanisms behind it, because we shouldn't just be treating a man with prostate cancer in a specific way. Every person is different. All our um, lectures have active research programs um, ongoing within the Conway Institute and within our teaching hospitals. So they are teaching students the latest cutting-edge technology and findings that are going on with the, in the area of medicine and biomedicine. Your first module in Stage 4 might be six-week immersion in medicine, during which time you will be in one of the major acute hospitals, seeing people coming in through the A&E department and following through them through their journey through the hospital to the point of discharge. So we make sure before you arrive on the wards as a junior doctor that you know, for example, how to prescribe drugs, how to organise a bed, how to take blood from a patient. So all of those procedural skills are again taught in a very safe environment until the point that, that you're comfortable that you can do them so that when you're in the real world environment, um, these types of things are second nature to you. It's great having young, energetic, enthusiastic medical students who come in very, very bright and intelligent uh, young people. They get to work with clinicians, understand and see patients, get samples from patients, bring them into the laboratory, do research on them. So UCD has an excellent um, foundation of lectures and research facilities whereby we can really teach them the cutting edge uh, aspects of the basic principles and mechanisms by which disease occurs. The rewards in terms of personal and professional satisfaction can be tremendous. The ability to give something back to your society and there is so much diversity within the, the profession. Most people can find something that they really like and are happy that they're 30 years later that they made the right career choice.